Hello everyone and welcome back to Vulnerability Weekly. For who joins for the first time, we every week we explore the major news, the vulnerabilities um, we've seen in the wild and what we've seen happening, what's hot, and we analyze week on week uh, the vulnerability across application security, infrastructure security, and cloud security together with bonus news and breach that we see in the news. Um, everything that I'm gonna say express is purely my opinion. It doesn't represent um, anything or any vendor opinion unless we quote and cite um, specific opinion or specific things. And everything can be found on our site, www.upsecclinics.com slash security vulnerability of the week. We update that every week. And I hope this is useful. Uh, I hope you find vulnerability or things that you have missed in the news. I started doing this for myself to actually keep myself updated and looking at what's happening and how stories evolve. And we're gonna explore a few this week. So we're gonna start with a brief overview of vulnerability and then deep dive in a number of interesting news. And we'll try to keep this in under 10 minutes so that in your busy days, you get the snippet of what's hot, and hopefully, you can. Hopefully, we can share something that you miss. I hope not, but in case you have, you can catch it early on. But without further ado, let's start the vulnerability weekly of the week of the 9th of May, twenty twenty two. So in this in this episode, we'll focus on a lot on the infrastructure and network and security appliance, F5, QNAP. We touched this last week. We touched on what happened on QNAP and a few other releases, but uh, this week there is more in terms of update, in terms of fixes. Now, there is a recent change in um, Git and GitHub that after the breach that they discover for credential disclose, especially on uh, recently, they're announcing they're forcing organization and maintainers more into two-factor authentication. Now, the ripple effect of that is that um, well, we're getting more security and uh, hopefully more supply chain security embedded into the mix, but some of the maintainer don't like the idea or they're changing opinion. One effect is actually um, on a sheet for j uh, or sheet js that is a popular framework to actually create a spreadsheet in uh, uh, that is shifting support uh, from npm and you can see you know the record here of the email that was sent uh, from NPM. This is this was a bit of a weird news of somebody shifting for multi-factor. It caught me by surprise, especially due to the recent um, well, the recent attack on a couple of libraries that were exploited before uh, that is parts of JS and uh, COA. You know, we've seen more and more attacks into vulnerabilities of libraries. So. I welcome this approach from GitHub, but not everybody was kind of keen on it. So the major news, of course, is GitHub that is uh, after the breach that affected Heroku and few other CICD uh, platform uh, that is forcing users to adopt more TOTP. Uh, and for who doesn't know TOTP is the authenticator part because multi-factor authentication based on SMS has been um, has been has seen more recent attack and threat actor can bypass with SIM swap and other attack of similar uh, SMS based two-factor authenticator. So the TOTP is considered fundamentally more secure and. Still, the advisory that is from GitHub that is not only applicable now, but consistently is for uh, changing credentials, sharing for secret with Truffle Hog, 
reviewing and expiring O2 token if possible, and so on and so forth. We, we published the full release um, guideline and support news in the article. Now, from an infrastructure perspective, we've seen for Windows, a new malware coming up that is called um, Raspberry Robin. And it, it caught me by <laughs> surprise because I thought initially by looking at it, there was a Raspberry vulnerability, but uh, it's actually a new form of, of malware that is propagating and is trying to leverage on the QNAP vulnerabilities that we talked last week. And um, it's probably quite frequently um, as a uh, USB drive or a la USB drive affecting uh, a couple of library like RecServe32, XE and run DLL32, XL uh, and DLL host XE. And we've seen common and control or I've seen several articles mentioning common and control uh, or C2 involving those those runtime contacting uh, Tor addresses. Now, of course, the vulnerability of the week has been queued up uh, with several fixes after last week, um, news of, um, well, a couple of weeks of news for queuing up and um, other being affected for who doesn't know queuing up does network storage. And um, the vulnerability was discovered by the NCC group at pound point on. Now the major one is the 27588 um, that fundamentally allow you to um, to exploit and I don't want this uh, to exploit and then get reverse shell. Um, so it's um, it's been released with the latest patch and release uh, of May the sixth. Um, a series of patch have been released to cover fundamentally the number of vulnerability disclosed uh, of recently. But this has been the one that is um, more recent. So the version affected is QNAP or QTS from 5 uh, to 4.3. So if you have QNAP system, please allow communication to QNAP server uh, from your firewall and allow update. From the F5 perspective, F5, for who doesn't know, produce big IP that is a WAF and a web application firewall. From a cloud perspective, those have been already patched, but if you have system, uh, F5 has released new vulnerability patches, 43 specifically, uh, and this one specifically, this was particularly bad because allow bypass of authentication and exploit. Um, so, go and fix your F5 if you have deployed, if you have a uh, big AP in the cloud or you rely on WAF in the cloud, then those have been already fixed. Now, a bit on the sideline uh, on not a vulnerability, but potentially a, a, an issue was the trend micro with um, a couple of false positive that of course affected normal process to be flagged as vulnerable. And um, Trend has already reissued a fix around, but if you want to look at the full news, Bleeping Computer has the full detail on uh, how to fix this temporary issue. Now, from a cloud perspective, Heroku is probably the more recent bridge due to the GitHub uh, bridge and um, of recent, we've seen Heroku contacting individual users and updating for updating credential or expiring credentials. Uh, this as preventative measure from um, the recent incident that was disclosed by GitHub. A uh, bit of a funny news, uh, there was a bug in Google Docs that affected, uh, especially if you write end, 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 
and was crushing Google Docs, at least the front end. Uh, this has been already fixed. Um, we saw the news on bleeping computer. It was a little bit of a funny story. Now, um, from a, again, cloud perspective, we're covering a number of issues. Um, this week we cover AWS for Log4j and the recent uh, vulnerability that were disclosed and the hot patches that were disclosed. So there was a specific uh, element that wasn't fixed for Log4j on the Linux image and the AMI image for AWS uh, that thanks to um, the, our friends and folks at Palo Alto um, were detected that fundamentally those AMI weren't getting updated and there was um, there was a security issue uh, that was addressed by these two new image. Now, on the more historic side that we are covering, so we, we're still covering a few of them, uh, but this week we'll focus on Orca security that has discovered um, in January 2022, a security issue that was very short-lived and in a very specific use case where they could leverage um, a specific uh, AWS uh, account, um, a specific um, role and trick the assumed role into um, fundamentally having more permission and to get access to an API that was uh, just from AWS uh, that, that, that wasn't feasible for AWS users. And this hasn't affected any customer and AWS was very quick on responding. We're gonna cover others, AWS, and related uh, issue that um, week on week to explore fundamentally the recent patches and the recent vulnerability discovered week on week. On a funny side, um, if you're a gamer, Xbox Live was down for at least two hours and there was no information of why this was happening. So I hope this week vulnerability weekly was informational. Again, probably the major news was the F5 and the Windows Raspberry Robin vulnerability and malware um, being deployed as part of the QNAP and F5 update together with a bit of a funny story around uh, shit for shit.js and GitHub enforcing security. This is Francesco, your host. I hope this was useful and I hope you get um, some news and some insight. But please feel free to add comment of what you wanna see and um, what you think about Vulnerability Weekly. In the meantime, stay safe and do safe software security and cloud security. <laughs> Goodbye.